They've never been treated by, you know, in popular culture as anything other than objects of satire and ridicule. And if anything, I find that people are responding to the fact that we're treating them as complex, three-dimensional human beings trapped behind these, you know, this, this prison of having to be, you know, where we don't know what we want of them. We don't know, we, we can't work out whether we want them to be just like us or nothing like us. Uh, whether we want them to be mortal or whether we want them to be immortal gods, you know, imperfect or perfect. And that's a terrible place to be. Each season is roughly a decade. And you look at it and you think, you know, what, what, what is it about a decade? You know, certain events pop and, and you want to try and string them together and, uh, you know, and sometimes it's, a, I always think it's a bit like a, a bath in a bad old English country house where the water, when you turn on the bath, the water comes out brown for a bit. And you have initially you have bad ideas and eventually you get to clear water. And we try and find things that are both surprising but also not so surprising that you don't recognize the decade anymore. And, and then I start writing. And then that process actually where I'm trying to figure out what a season is and how it flows over a 10 hour sort of a canvas. Um, that, that's both the most difficult but also the most enjoyable part of the process as a writer. And then show running is something completely different. Um, you, you, you then emerge from this very private experience into this glorious sort of collective experience. When I first started writing The Crown, I, I probably thought that, that the story would be more uh, across the whole season, that maybe it would be more of a serial. And of course, those long running stories are, you know, the, you know as characters grow up and evolve and so forth. But, um, it, it has seemed to have found its way into these, into these more individual episodes. There the, in season three, there are two episodes: episode eight and episode nine. They feel like a, they feel like a, they, they're sequential, mm -hmm. a little two-parter. Yeah. Um, but uh, mostly they are individual apps, yeah. I think when you're doing a drama based on real people, real events, you have to constantly ask yourself where you stand in truth and accuracy mm -hmm. and, and what the responsibility of that is. And so I think all our significant debates are about, you know, how comfortable am I saying a certain thing or, or, or having dialogue that suggests another thing when the facts you know, whose fact, which historian, what point of view have those historians, so where am I getting my facts? And, you know, I mean, the good news about the royal family and about prime ministers is that both of them are, their day-to-day -day movements are so clearly, you know, everybody knows where they were and when on each particular day. There's no mystery about it at all. So you can tell the character was here and then here and then here and here, but I have to join the dots. And that's where the act of imagination comes in. And then you're sort of saying, well, hang on a minute. The minute, it is, the minute it is committed to film, people are going to assume, if you've done your job right in all the other areas, yeah. if what you're doing is satire and the rules are clear that it's satire, you know, it's one thing. But if what you're saying is this is a plausible emotional reality between plausible human beings, it then follows that what they do and say, people will think you have treated responsibly enough. But of course, there is an act of the imagination. And I think that there's a covenant of trust with an audience where they think I'm watching something and I'm, I think people know, but too often I get shocked where people say, oh, but when that happened, I go, well, no, actually, I, I had to imagine that. And therefore I can't say with any degree of certainty that that is what happened. But I, I wouldn't have done it unless I think there's pretty good reason for it. People are watching Netflix in, in, in two or three hour spells. And therefore I'm thinking which episodes to put together, not as individual episodes in the way that people used to think on a weekly basis. So in this sense, it is different from writing a film or whatever. But the actual writing, I, I, I just think, what is a story and what's the best way of telling it within that, you know? And when, and when, you, when you approach a decade, you've, you're so brainwashed or, or you've become so conditioned to think in terms of the, sort of the greatest hits of that particular decade. And, and so then you've got to think, well, which part of those greatest hits, would it be irresponsible to not include, um, you know, Profumo, the Kennedys, or yes? Um, and which part would it be surprising to include? The way in which people are watching television now. They're watching sometimes in groups of two or three, and you know, this binge watching phenomenon, you know. It, as a dramatist, you sort of have to, you have to start thinking, how do you write and 
structure episodes and the flow of a whole season differently in the way give you know to 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 take into consideration the way that people are, are watching television now.